Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Alana Glazer. On this show, we've gone over the works of comedians like Michelle Wolf, Lily Singh, and Hannah Gadsby. Maybe others too, but honestly, we've done like 300 episodes and it's kind of getting hard to keep track at this point. And what those very accomplished women all have in common in addition to not being too funny, I won't say never funny because everyone has their moments, but overall, meh, right? Anyway, they're all woke and not just liberal, but woke. We're talking that men bad, let's hate on white people. Periods are the most amazing part of being a woman and I'm gonna talk about them an uncomfortable amount, but also they have nothing to do with being a woman because otherwise that would be recognizing that gender is related to biology, which of course it isn't, that kind of thing. From everything I've seen from her, Alana Glazer fits exactly into that woke, not too funny female comedian category. <sighs> and gay women, there is no joke, they won. They beat the simulation. It's two out of two superior complex partners. They did it. I have to admit, I have a cis male partner. Ew! <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Amazing. So it is her content that we're going to be subjecting ourselves to in this episode. But first, here is a quick message from our sponsor, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Evan Hafer founded Black Rifle Coffee Company in 2014, along with Army Ranger Matt Best as the combination of two passions, delivering premium roast to order coffee and supporting the veteran and military community. With the buy a bag, give a bag campaign, Black Rifle Coffee Company donated over 30,000 pounds of coffee to troops overseas in 2019. Black Rifle Coffee Company offers a variety of roast profiles from light, medium, and dark, all sourced from around the world through a rigorous process and roasted in the U.S. True coffee lovers should look into the exclusive coffee subscription. Every month, Black Rifle Coffee Company releases a limited amount of exotic microlot coffee from different corners of the world. And the best way to enjoy Black Rifle Coffee Company coffee is through the Coffee Club, a free subscription where your chosen coffee is roasted, packaged, and shipped free to your door on your schedule. In addition to the convenience, you receive special discounted pricing and gain access to exclusive products, member-only content, partner discounts, and more. So purchase at blackriflecoffee.com slash Lauren and use the promo code Lauren for 20% off your first purchase. So in case you've never heard of Alana Glazer, she's an actress and comedian that used to star in the sitcom Broad City that aired on Comedy Central. The show ran for five seasons, but now that it's over, Alana is spending more time on on her stand-up work to mixed results, in my opinion. And by the way, I had never heard of Broad City or Alana Glazer until that is Jossie, who watches the show, told me to check her out for possible content. So I just wanted to say thank you, Jossie. I really appreciate the tip. I It was definitely worth a check out on my end. And if you guys ever see stuff that you think might make for a fun episode, feel free to send it our way. I mean, we just, we eat up cringe over here, like the worst the better. Now, Alana isn't as big as people like Lily Singh or Amy Schumer, which is why I'm guessing at least some of you hadn't heard of her, but based on her being a woke female comedian, I am sure, in fact, positive that the mainstream media is going to be propping her up and shoving her down our throats despite most people not really being into her stuff like they love to do. For example, here's a clip of her on Kimmel's show from this past January. Watch it, and tell me you don't see a progressive darling in the making. I guess I'm uh, kind of known as a New York Jew. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, and then the only other place I go all the time is LA, New York and LA, and everybody's like, can you still eat or whatever. But when I go on tour, when I've been on tour, it's so cool to see how actually progressive and diverse and queer and gay the middle of the country is. And I find that in Texas too. That is the most coastal elitist way I have ever heard someone dismiss the idea of being a coastal elitist, like telling a crowd in LA, don't worry guys, Houston is not that bad. They have gays and diversity and they're actually progressive, so it's okay, you, you can go there. They're fine. Usually I'd rhetorically ask, oh, so does that mean if there weren't gays and diversity and progressives, she wouldn't like it there? But but yeah, I mean, obviously that that is what she thinks. Just screw places that are white, straight, and conservative. Whatever though, that's 
that's cool. I, I don't put much stock into what someone who only goes between LA and New York most of the time thinks is a nice place anyway. But Glazer isn't just your average outspoken progressive celebrity. She's actually fully an activist, the whole Chelsea Handler route. She even does voter registration parties that are also dance parties, which she calls horny for the, spelled T-H-A, polls. Youth culture. Yeah. And Glazer makes it very clear that these parties only welcome Democrat candidates to speak. No Republicans. GTFO. Here's her reasoning why. Now, why only Democratic candidates? Don't you want everyone to vote? And wouldn't it be funnier to see Republican candidates dance? <laughs> no, no. There, it's just like, it's just, I mean, maybe 20 years ago, maybe there could have been an interesting conversation between parties, but it's not even interesting anymore. It's like human rights versus anti-human rights. I'm, I'm over it. I don't need to. Um, I see. All and right. also, who am I reaching? If you're an activist, I'm not saying you have to be a, well, let's promote both sides kind of person. You don't campaign for the people you want in office. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just how democracy works. But I do think it's kind of interesting to hear what she thinks about Republicans as a whole. Just just hate human rights, you know? Sometimes I worry that my show is too inflammatory, but then I hear people like her talk and it's like, well, I mean, there's, there's room for both of us to be jerks, but I think she's more of a jerk. Speaking of failing upwards though, which we were not doing, but we are now to promote her new stand-up routine, Alana actually landed an Amazon Prime special, which is a big deal. It's called The Planet is Burning and Technically, it's a series, like on the site it says season one and then episode one, that kind of thing. But there's only one episode, which came out in January and is a full hour, and there hasn't been anything uploaded to it since. So, I don't know, seems like just a regular one-off special, but who knows, maybe we will see an episode two at some point. I mean, I won't see it because I won't watch it regardless. And I have a pretty good feeling you guys are gonna feel the same way. And to be clear, I'm not someone who is incapable of laughing at political jokes or jokes that go against my own belief system. In fact, I did say, and did a whole episode, about how I actually thought parts of Michelle Wolf's latest Netflix special, Joke Show, were funny. And some of you guys said, no, nah, uh Some of you actually did go to watch it after and said that you liked it. That's okay, we, we can disagree there, but my point is, I don't think Alana Glazer isn't funny because she's progressive. I think Alana Glazer isn't funny because she, like all the other collectivist comedians, mistake opinions for jokes. So the government is on fire, <laughs> and so is the planet. The planet is on fire. And the mean dinosaurs in office just don't seem to mind. No. Mm -mm. I think they want us to die because they are about to die. <laughs> that is the ultimate FOMO. That's not a joke, right? That is a statement of belief. I would expect to see that more at the beginning of a manifesto than at the beginning of a stand-up routine. And why it's part of her set at all, I do not know because it's not like it leads into a joke either. And I love how even her audience isn't really laughing. But hey, FOMO, another trendy thing that youth culture still definitely says. And we have a lot more to go over, but first I wanna tell you guys about keeps. Losing your hair sucks, right? But you know what doesn't? Keeping your hair without leaving your couch. If you're losing your hair, you gotta know Keeps. Keeps offers the generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products. That's the real deal and the generic versions save you a fortune. It's simple. Just answer a few online questions, snap a few photos of your hair and a doctor will review everything and recommend the right FDA approved hair loss treatment for you. Then it's shipped discreetly to your door. And you're probably wondering, Will it work? Well, a whopping 66% of men experience hair regrowth thanks to Keeps. Losing your hair sucks, so let's do something about it. Here's the deal I got for you. Go to keeps.com slash Lauren, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Lauren to get your first order of Keeps hair loss treatment for 50% off. 
That's right, half off. That's keeps.com slash Lauren. Again, keeps.com slash Lauren. Here is what she said next. And keep in mind, this is what came right after the last clip. So if you're thinking there's some context missing, something that might make what she's about to say either funny or clever or relevant, there's not. One thing that gives me hope is the gender non-conforming youth. Again, this is literally just an opinion, which of course, yes, she is allowed to have and she's allowed to express, but this is not comedy. And also, if I might add, it's not even a good opinion. Like, even if you are on board with the whole non-binary thing, imagine someone says, hey, we, we live in this crazy world, but what is one thing that gives you hope? Of all the things you could say, science, humanitarian work, your faith, families, friendship, the healing power of love, you say gender non-conforming youth. What? Bored teenagers who are trying to get attention and who would have, let's be real, been either goth or seen kids to be special if they were born 10 years earlier, that's what gives you hope? Can you say pandering much? but it gets worse. I think it is amazing. I find it just incredible to see these young people have the agency to say, I am non-binary. I don't have that kind of agency and I literally have agents. So that was an attempt at a joke, right? Agents, agency, they sound similar. I mean, they don't really mean similar things, and it's not like having agents would give you any more agency, but it may not have been a good joke, but hey, the building blocks of a joke were there. So I'll give her that, but it's not agency that leads kids to say they're non-binary. It's ideology, and we know by now that Alana has plenty of that, so why she's making it out to be some big brave statement to call yourself non-binary? I would probably say for the pandering. And it was at this point, in the special that I knew, I simply knew that things were not going to get better, but I kept watching, gentle viewer, for you. Because we have been fed the crappiest, most boring script. This script that says that we can only play one of two parts. And that is either that of a masculine man, I don't know. <laughs> or you can play a, oh, oh, yeah, a freaking feminine woman. Oh, oh. Apparently, Alana thinks that we are in the 50s, which is the vibe that I also get from a lot of other woke activists. Like, you're not breaking boundaries by being a woman. <gasps> who also has short hair. Look at me, I'm a woman, but I'm not feminine. Like, that's okay. That's been okay for a while. And I mean, I actually feel kind of stupid explaining that because it seems so self-evident, but apparently it's not self-evident because she, Alana, is saying these things and it's hard to even respond to this. Like if I were to show you a video of a dog throwing up and then eating it, and then said, so what are your thoughts? I'm guessing you probably wouldn't know what to say. And that's kind of how I feel watching this special. I mean, I know what I'm watching is not good and that I don't like it, but it's hard for me to articulate all of the reasons why. If I were a drink, I'd be one part gay and two parts straight. You might call that drink a giant ton dick. <laughs> <laughs> or like at a different bar with a different vibe. A both sexes on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a martini, a muff peeny. If we've learned anything from the special, it's that Alana likes her puns or what she attempts to pass off as puns. And hey, again, at least they are jokes or attempts at humor, so so that's something. But remember, this is an Amazon Prime comedy special, not just some open mic night at a comedy club. Think about how much money she got paid to do this, not only to do the special, but also to go perform the set on tour. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even into the seven figures with everything combined. Either way, that's a lot of money. A lot of money for 
Gina Tondik. Muff Peeny. And if you think I'm just being hard on Alana because I'm a right winger, no, it's not just me who thinks this is terrible. On Rotten Tomatoes, the special has a dismal 8% audience score, and even the critics, who are usually willing to overlook a lack of quality if a piece conforms to their agenda, only gave The Planet is Burning 71%. It has a 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb, and it has a 2.2 out of 5 stars on Amazon, with 64% of ratings being 1 star ratings. It's not just me, okay? This is not good. This isn't funny, it's not clever, this isn't interesting, and unfortunately, a lot of it is just stupid, or it, it doesn't even make sense. For example, Husband just sounds like wasp drag coming out of this Jewy mouth. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my husband. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, my husband and I, we, um... What? Did Alana forget that Jews get married and that actually getting married is kind of a pretty big part of the Jewish faith, and also almost everyone culturally, historically gets married. Like, what even is the punchline here? Marriage bad, marriage something only wasps do, wasps bad? Like, I, I don't get it. Look at me, I'm drinking bottled water, how waspy. This is just one of the worst things that I have seen in quite a while. Honestly, I would rather watch Woke Charlie's Angels 10 times than have to sit through the rest of Alana's special, which no, I did not finish watching. But as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Alana Glazer, are you a fan? Yes or no? Is, is this humor? Am I just missing something? Let me know. But that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.